श्री राधा कृष्णाय नमो नम एट फर्स्ट आई ऑफर माई हम्बल प्रेयर्स इन द लोटस फीट ऑफ लॉर्ड श्री राधा कृष्ण आई ऑल्सो एक्सटेंड वॉम ग्रीटिंग्स एंड रिस्पेक्ट टू ऑल ऑफ यू टूडे फ्रॉम द स्क्रिप्चर श्री विवेक चूड़ा मनी कंपोज बाय आदि श्री शंकराचार्य जी वी विल बी लिस्टिंग चैप्टर नंबर टेन द होली वर्ड्स फ्रॉम द स्क्रिप्चर आर एज फॉलोज Owing to the desire to run after society the passion for too much study of the scriptures and the desire to keep the body in good trim people cannot attain to proper realization for one who seeks deliverance from the prison of this world samsara those three desires have been designated by the wise as strong iron fetters to shackle one's feet he who is free from them truly attains to liberation The lovely odor of the aguru which is hidden by the powerful stench due to its contact with water and the like manifests itself as soon as the foreign smell has been fully removed by rubbing like the fragrance of the sandalwood the perfume of the supreme self which is covered with the dust of endless violent impressions embedded in the mind when purified by the constant friction of knowledge is clearly perceived The desire for self-realization is obscured by innumerable desire for things other than the self. When they have been destroyed by the constant attachment to the self, the atman clearly manifests itself of its own accord. As the mind becomes gradually established in the inmost self, it proportionately gives up the desires for external objects, and when all such desires have been eliminated, there takes place the unobstructed realization of the atman the yogi's mind dies being constantly fixed on his own self then follows the cessation of desires therefore do away with thy superimposition tamas is destroyed by both sattva and rajas rajas by sattva and sattva by the pure brahman therefore do away with the superimposition through the help of sattva Knowing for certain that the prarabdha work will maintain this body, remain quiet and do away with thy superimposition, carefully and with patience. I am not the individual soul, but the supreme Brahman. Eliminating thus all that is not self, do away with thy superimposition, which has come through the momentum of past impressions. Realizing thyself as the self of all by means of scripture. reasoning and thy own realization do away with thy superimposition even when a trace of it seems to remain the sage has no connection whatever with action since he has no idea of accepting or giving up therefore constant by engrossed with the brahman do away with thy superimposition through the realization of the identity of brahman and the soul resulting from such great dicta as thou art that do away with thy superimposition with a view of strengthening thy identification with brahman until the identification with this body is completely rooted out do away with thy superimposition with watchfulness and a concentrated mind so long as even a dream like perception of the universe and souls persist do away with thy superimposition o learned man without the least break without giving the slightest chance to oblivion on account of sleep concerned in secular matters or the sense objects reflect on the self in thy mind shunning from a safe distance the body which has come from impurities of the parents and itself consist of flesh and impurities as one does an outcast be thou brahman and realize the consummation of thy life merging the finite soul in the supreme self like the space enclosed by a jar in the infinite space by means of meditation on their identity always keep quiet o sage becoming thyself the self effulgent brahman the substratum of all phenomena as that reality give up both the macrocosm and the microcosm like two filthy receptacles transferring the identification now rooted in the body of the atman the existence knowledge bliss absolute and discarding the subtle body be thou ever alone independent that in which there is 
this reflection of the universe as of a city in a mirror, that Brahman art thou, knowing this thou, wilt attain the consummation of thy life. That which is real and one's own primeval essence, that knowledge and bliss absolute, the one without a second, which is beyond form and activity, attaining that one should cease to identify oneself with one's false bodies, like an actor giving up his assumed mask. This objective universe is absolutely unreal, neither is egoism a reality, for it is observed to be momentary. How can the perception, I know all, be true of egoism and the like which are momentary? But the real I is that which witnesses the ego and the rest. It exists always, even in the state of profound sleep. The Shruti itself says it is birthless, eternal, and so on. Therefore, the Paramatman is different from the gross and subtle bodies. The knower of all changes in things subject to change should necessarily be eternal and changeless. The unreality of the gross and subtle bodies is again and again clearly observed in imagination, dream and profound sleep. Therefore, give up the identification with this lump of flesh, the gross body, as well as with the ego or the subtle body, which are both imagined by the buddhi. Realizing thy own self, which is knowledge, absolute and not to be denied in the past, present or future, attain to peace. Cease to identify thyself with the family, lineage, name, form and order of life which pertain to the body that is like a rotten corpse. Similarly, giving up ideas of agency and so forth which are attributes of the subtle body be the essence of bliss absolute. Other obstacles are also observed to exist for men which lead to transmigration. The root of them for the above reason is first modification of nascence called egoism. So long as one has any relation to this wicked ego, there should not be the least talk about liberation, which is unique. Free from the clutches of egoism as the moon from those of Rahu, man attains to his real nature and becomes pure, infinite, ever blissful and self-luminous. Thus concludes chapter number 10 from the scripture Sri Vivek Churamani. Thank you for listening. Sri Radha Krishna Namo Namaha.